Hi, and welcome to Discover Oklahoma. I'm Jennifer Reynolds. And I'm Dean O'Lally. Our location for today's show is the Fred Jones Museum of Art in Norman. There is so much art packed into this museum and so many kinds of art. It is just amazing. There are nearly 17,000 works in the permanent collection here, and of course several thousand more are on loan in traveling exhibits. Right now the museum is featuring the works of contemporary sculptor James Searles, and it's a striking exhibition. We'll tell you more about how you can plan your visit here just a little bit later in the show. But right now, let's get outside and experience life the way it used to be on the Oklahoma prairies. Jason Grubbs takes us to a working cattle ranch near Sand Springs, the Flying G. Take old Highway 51 a few miles west of Tulsa and you'll come across a little town by the name of Lotsey, Oklahoma. It's home to the Flying G Ranch. My grandparents came here in the late 20s and they got the ranch established in 1932. Erin Noggle was raised out here. In fact, her mom is the town's namesake. Today, she lives on the ranch with her husband, Bo. There's just over 2,000 acres. The family owned about 30 horses and board around 20 more. Visitors are welcome anytime and we get all kinds of visitors from all over the world, really. Um, and we get a lot of local people. This is where you can find your inner cowboy on a horseback ride through the trails. Just a 30 minute drive, you can be out of all the hustle and bustle of the, the downtown uh, rat race and get out here and, and enjoy the peace and quiet. If you come out here, it's best if you wear long pants and some kind of boot. I went the extra mile and brought my cowboy hat and my monogram Western belt buckle. Uh, the trail rides are about an hour long. We can take around 20 people on a single trail ride. There are several different trails you can take, so the ride's never the same. There's everything from open fields to wooded areas and creeks. You'll also never see the same wildlife. You're gonna see anything from deer, turkey, uh, armadillos. We see all kinds of things. Um, Sometimes it depends on how loud the group is though. We saw Longhorns on our trip and some great views from one of the tallest points on the ranch, Persimmon Hill. That's the main ranch That's house. That's the main ranch house where we started. There's the barn. Don't worry if you don't know how to ride. Aaron and Bo will give you a quick lesson and coach you through the trails. Now when we come down this hill, kind of lean back a little bit and kind of put your feet forward. Our horses and our trails are very beginner friendly, um, but even advanced people still have a good time. It's 35 bucks a person for folks age six and up, all by appointment. They like a 24 hour notice, but Aaron and Bo are pretty flexible. Some people call and they just happen to get in. You know, we'd be doing one that day and we can fit them in. Uh, the more time, of course, we have, the, the better chances we can get your exact day and time. In Lotsey, Oklahoma, I'm Jason Grubbs. The Flying G offers some of the best trail riding in the state. And they say they operate in all types of weather. Trail rides are $35 a person, and they do ask that you make reservations in advance, so be sure to do that by phone or online. Once the cattle drive is over, every good cow head needs a place to go kick back and relax. Absolutely. How about a hidden getaway in Guthrie? It's time to visit the Betty Jean Bed and Breakfast. If you are a connoisseur of history and nostalgia, if vintage provides comfort and style, then the sweet Betty Jean Bed and Breakfast in Guthrie is where you need to stay. The building itself was built in 1913 and has a style all its own. And inside, well, you get an entire floor in the form of a loft suite. People stay here, they get the whole place to themselves. It's private and just a getaway. Privacy and a lot of elbow room. Oh yeah, give me the quick tour. Well, we, uh, have authentic antiques here. Um, most everything in here was, was built about the same time this building was. Uh, there's a few replicas like the record player that people can play vinyl records on. Uh, but almost everything you see is, is authentic from the, from the times. Authentic can result in being very comfortable. The Betty Jean Bed and Breakfast unites a unique elegance with fun artifacts, but comfort is consistent throughout. There's a little sitting area where you can literally sit and relax and read. There's not only a lot of room to relax, but there's a lot of privacy. You'll also discover a medley of photos, and upon further investigation, you'll realize this bed and breakfast honors Gary Good's parents, specifically his mom, after whom the bed and breakfast is named. There are remnants of your family throughout the suite. Yes. Uh, just for our viewers, just let them know who some of these people are. Well, this was my mom. This was the last portrait done of her in 1968. She passed away in 1970. She was the original singer in the Algood Orchestra. Mm -hmm. And uh, the logo that we use, which is on the wall down there, is a portrait of her when she was 19, done in 1942. 
But pictures around um, family shots. Uh, like this, these two are the ones I noticed when we first walked in. This is my father, Al Good, and uh, my mom there. This was a mallet from his orchestra from the vibes that he played. <laughs> Gary also told me he spent quite a bit of money on the beds. He wanted his guests to sleep in complete comfort. One of the things that uh, also caught my attention is the big kitchen so they can come in and actually cook. And um, you said, how is breakfast done? We do a continental breakfast and we provide um, fresh fruit, yogurt, orange juice. We also have bacon and eggs that they can prepare themselves whenever they want to, mm -hmm. midnight or in the morning. Everything you need, including pots and pans, are provided. This distinguished building housing the bed and breakfast, by the way, is in downtown Guthrie. You have downtown noises like you, you do anywhere in downtown, but uh, it's, it's a very uh, peaceful getaway here. People just really appreciate the solitude. Comfort, simple elegance, put on some classic music, eat a nice meal, privacy and quiet. All in all, this is a, and if you'll pardon the pun, a very good place to stay. There are all kinds of country getaways across our state. Our friends at the Oklahoma Department of Agritourism have created a list of these great getaways. We're happy to send you a copy. Just log on to our website, travelok.com, and click on Request Free Brochures. Coming up on Discover Oklahoma. We firmly believe that everybody has the potential to be creative. It's in everybody's mind and in everybody's heart. The spot in Tulsa where you can create or just experience the most interesting art. So I've got Chardonnay, Merlot, Cabernet Sauvignon, Riesling. And our trip to the Whirlwind Winery and why they say every glass is full of Oklahoma history. Madison Park is just, this, this, in the last five years has just exploded. Plus the boom town out west shares one of its greatest places to eat. What you'll find near the water in Madison Park, coming up right here on Discover Oklahoma. Great travel tips anytime. Like Discover Oklahoma on Facebook and follow us on Instagram and Twitter. See for yourself. Welcome back to Discover Oklahoma, coming to you from the Fred Jones Jr. Museum of Art on the OU campus. And there's an amazing collection here from Absolutely. French Impressionism to Louis Jimenez's fiberglass sculpture of Mustaño. And you can see it all here. Right? And free. And Did we mention that? free. Love that. Now, right now, we're going to go to Tulsa, and mm -hmm. on just a little bit of a smaller scale, the folks there are enjoying the work of that city's Arts and Humanities Council at the Hardesty Art Center. Julie Chen tells us more. The Hardesty Arts Center is working to inspire a more artistic Oklahoma. We firmly believe that everybody has the potential to be creative. It's in everybody's mind and in everybody's heart, but they might not have the tools or the place to do that. And so that's what this building was built to do to fill that niche. The Art Center, or AHA as it's known, opened in 2012. It's a place to experience the arts and there are lots of ways to do just that. We have gallery space, we have workshops, studios for artists, um, just ways for the community to engage in art. On the first floor, you'll find the main gallery, home to rotating exhibits in a range of different styles and mediums. There's also an outdoor green space for performances, concerts and events. Venture upstairs in the four-story building and you'll find another gallery, photography area, wood shop and more. We have studio space for artists as well. So we have artists in residence, people from out of town who are exhibiting in the gallery. 
um, are here and helping us engage with the community. So there's lots of different things going on. And if you're looking for something new, fun, and free to do with the kids, you gotta come here every third Saturday of the month for Imagination Day. They'll have hands-on arts activities for the kids. We have in our family studio free art classes and workshops, and it's different every time. And most of the time it involves an artist who's actually exhibiting in the gallery. So they participate in that, and it relates to the show that the kids can see down in the main gallery. So it's a really great opportunity to come and experience art. AHA is open Thursday through Sunday from 1 to 5 and until 9 at night on First Fridays. We try to showcase something new on First Fridays when there's the First Friday Art Crawl in the Brady Arts District. So that's a really great time to come and kind of get your feet wet and check it out and see what's going on in the whole neighborhood as well as here at AHA. The Hardesty Arts Center. Stop by and you'll see it's a work of art. This is just an amazing facility and there are so many layers. I would just encourage people to come and check it out. Come on a First Friday or a Third Saturday, see what we're about. In Tulsa, I'm Julie Chin, Discovering Oklahoma. To find out more about places all across Oklahoma that you should visit this fall, you need a copy of the Oklahoma Travel Guide. We're happy to send you a free copy. Just head to our website, TravelOK.com, and click on Request Free Brochures. Up next on Discover Oklahoma. There was a Fay School District whose mascot was the Whirlwind. How one Western Oklahoma winery got its name and why you'll want to visit. We have ribeyes, we have hamburgers, catfish, chicken fried steak. Plus a place you're gonna to wanna to stop if you're headed to Medicine Park, still ahead on Discover Oklahoma. Welcome back. We are in Norman this week at the Fred Jones Jr. Museum of Art. And you know, two things that go pretty well together. How about art and a nice relaxing glass of wine? That works. And mm -hmm. if you're going to indulge or imbibe, <laughs> you might want to make sure that your next bottle is Oklahoma grown, so exactly. to speak. And with that, Darren Brown takes us to a winery in Watonga that has a lot of Oklahoma history with it. So I've got Chardonnay, Merlot, Cabernet Sauvignon, Riesling, Gewürztraminer, Cabernet Franc, and Barbera. Names you might not associate with Oklahoma. Brad Stinson is as familiar with his grapes as he is with the tight group of family and friends who help him pick them. How'd they get you out here? I'm Brad's mother. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> That's how they got me out here. The group also included an avid football fan who luckily wasn't committed this day. So if there was, a, if there was a game on right now, would you be out here? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I started growing grapes in 2002. That's when I planted the first half of this vineyard. And then we started the winery and started getting the winery started in 2005 and got licensed in 2006. <laughs> Whirlwind Winery began in Fay, Oklahoma, but moved to Watonga shortly after. The grapes, though, are still there, and Brad and his folks strive to give their wine flavors a local flair. It takes a lot to go from the vineyard to your table, and while I was there, the Whirlwind crew made it seem second nature. Once the grapes are collected, there's an assembly line process which includes destemming, transferring the destemmed grapes to a press, and then collecting the fresh juice. With a little TLC, this grape juice will soon be a batch of Whirlwind's signature wine. One that we've had that we started with was the Sweet Fay Rosé, a blend of reds that we just leave on the skins long enough to get some color, press the juice out, and then go through the fermentation process. It's what makes Sweet Fay Rosé their best seller. And since we're discussing unique flavors, what about that unique name? Well, I can help you with that. Before the towns of Thomas, Fay, and Custer combined, there was the Fay School District, whose mascot was the Whirlwind. 
And before that, there was Whirlwind himself, a Cheyenne chief who lived in this area. In the early 1900s, the Protestant Episcopal Church established a day school for Cheyenne kids in this location, and they named it after the old chief. Whirlwind invites you to come taste some wine and drink in some Oklahoma history. In Watonga, discovering Oklahoma, I'm Darren Brown. You can find great wineries all over Oklahoma, and we will help you locate them. Just hop onto our website, travelok.com, and request a copy of the Oklahoma Wine Trail brochure. Up next on Discover Oklahoma. And I decided that it would be a good location right here on the creek. The perfect place for some of the best food in western Oklahoma when we come back. See for yourself. Welcome back to Discover Oklahoma and the Fred Jones Jr. Museum of Art in Norman. And you know, just a little over an hour from here, give and take a few minutes, okay. there's an entire artist community, one of the best known in the state actually. We're talking about the beautiful little town of Medicine Park. And if you do make the trip there, be sure and stop by the Riverside Cafe. Our Lauren Farum gives us a preview. Riverside Cafe has been here in Medicine Park for about 18 years now. And it's a destination for locals and tourists from across the state because of the great food and also the beautiful view of Medicine Creek. It's about 14 years ago and it was the first time I've ever been to Medicine Park, lived, lived in this area all my life. And uh, I saw the Riverside and I said, boy, that would be very nice. And I decided that it would be a good location right here on the creek and, and uh, it would be very good for a restaurant. When you think of Medicine Park, Riverside Cafe immediately comes to mind. It's got a full menu of good old Oklahoma favorites. Riverside has everything from burgers to steaks. We have ribeyes, we have hamburgers, catfish, chicken fried steak, anything you want, we have it here. And the atmosphere can't be beat. If it's a little warm, you can sit inside in the air conditioner, or if it's a little cool, you can sit inside in the heat, or if it's a nice day, you can sit outside on the deck. Kids love to come to Riverside Cafe because of the great food, but they also love feeding the ducks off of the patio. <laughs> Riverside Cafe owner Forrest Ray has seen a lot of changes in Medicine Park over the last few years. Well, Medicine Park is this, this, in the last five years has just exploded. We have a stage, we have the Mayor's Blues Ball, we have Labor Day, we have a, a big event. Fourth of July, we have a big fireworks. And then we also have car shows here. We, this, just a lot of things going on in Medicine Park. Riverside Cafe has been a part of the renaissance going on in Medicine Park, and it's a great place to come and enjoy this Southwest Oklahoma treasure of a town. Discovering Oklahoma, I'm Lauren Farrum. Plan your next road trip meal with the help of the Discover Oklahoma Dining Guide. We share great places to eat all over the state. To get your free copy, just head to our website, travelok.com, and click on Request Free Brochures. Thanks to the Fred Jones Jr. Museum of Art for hosting us this week. You can find the museum on Elm Avenue, just west of Campus Corner. They're open every day except Monday. You can find their hours and all kinds of special exhibits and events on their website. We do want to encourage you to come out quickly by December 6th to see Immortalis, the Hall of Emperors of the Capitoline Museum's Rome. This brings to the U.S. for the first time a selection of 20 busts from the collection of the world's oldest museum. 
And coming up next Saturday on Discover Oklahoma, we're headed to the farm to experience life on the prairie. How you can too, coming up. And back in the big city, where to get one of the best burgers in the state. This place is so great, they don't mind standing in line for it. Next week, right here on Discover Oklahoma. So until next time, remember, there's always something to discover in Oklahoma. Production vehicle provided by the Oklahoma Ford Dealers, official partner of the Oklahoma Tourism and Recreation Department.